Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final round, back nine of the 2023 Dynamic Desk Tournament Capital Open. This one has been a doozy. If you haven't watched the front nine, go watch it because there has been some changes in the leaderboard. I'm Andre. I'm with Jesse. Hello. And uh, Jesse, what can we expect for the back nine of this final round? Yeah, back nine is more Mac Island, lots of birdies out there and available. You'll see more roped OB more short island type shots and some more big open guys yeah and some exciting disc golf yeah and let's take a look at our lead card here it's been really tight at the top and like we said you know that front nine we've seen some changes at the leaderboard here thomas gilbert dropping down to nag 19 sorry going to, hitting nag 19 dropping down to to third place uh max currently our leader nag 21 casey right behind him at nag 20 and adam First time on coverage, Nag 12. And uh, as you can see there, that's you know, some talented players. Yeah, we've seen a full shuffle in our top three. Thomas going from first to third, Casey from third to second, and now Max second back on top at first place. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah. if you want entertainment, this is it. Yeah, this is Canadian disc golf at its finest. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. And we'll take a look at our full leaderboard here. We just you just saw the top uh, top three of the top guys, anyways. Jade Smith rounding out the top four, Justin in fifth, Luke and Adam and and Jeremy and tied for sixth, and Noah and Ben tied for ninth. So, yeah, that middle board is uh, pretty tight as well. So absolutely, and this is a very high added cash tournament. So every stroke in that middle position could mean hundreds of dollars for these guys. Yeah. Hole 10, par 371 feet, widely regarded as one of the easier holes on the course. Danger here is going right, kicking off one of these trees right into the uh, the Thompson there. So, Yeah, honestly, uh, for players of this caliber, worse than birdie is almost unacceptable. A bogey here feels like a triple, yeah. and a par here feels like a bogey. Here's Casey Hanemeyer. He's throwing this really well. It's gonna settle. Oh, oh and hits the hits the. Uh, what do you call that? A water tower? We'll call it a water. Concrete, concrete. graffiti <laughs> cylinder. The artwork. He hits the artwork, but uh, still managed to come out of it. Yeah. Oh, oh, and look at this from Max. Flashing the cage there. That's a great correction off of Casey's inside throw. Mm -hmm. Thomas. A lot of color on his scoreboard right now. Let's see if he can make the correction. If you're going to make a correction, this is the hole. It looks like he's just going to do that. Well, Thomas jump putting. We spoke about it in uh, earlier in the coverage that he thinks he has about a 180-foot jump putt, and he's long on the 171-foot hole. There you go. These guys making no no problem with these on this hole. So Absolutely. Even Casey's uh, drive that he would definitely not be happy with is resulting him with a deep into circle one putt. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the interesting things that I saw was um, earlier in the day from this round, the FPO side, Julie Mullins took the forehand line on the other side of the tower. And if you want to see that coverage, we have final round, round three coverage of the FPO single camera. Yeah, there's some tight battles in that round as well. So. I'm excited to see that forehand because a gentleman in my group took that very same line against all of our advice and managed to land it on top of the tower which is the only out of bounds and the only mistake you can really make on the hole yeah hole 11 par 3 384 feet you know you got these sand traps play as hazard with this yellow marker around yeah most of these guys will try to just put one up have it drop down forehand back in yeah Pick your poison on this one for sure. We did range finder this one out to be about 415 feet, but downhill. The biggest mistakes I think you'll see players of this caliber make is to push it too long out the fence in the back here, which is out of bounds, or potentially pull one into the trees on the right, trying to get a kind of a flexing shape that settles down by the basket. Yeah, and Casey Hannemeyer, you see him there. He's got four birdies in a row. Let's see if he can add another one onto that. This, unfortunately, uh, just a little too shapey to get down in time, pushes out into those trees. This yeah. will likely be a layup for par from Casey. 
yeah i mean when you're so close like that that's uh you know i wonder if the pressure's kind of getting into him this needs to come back for max like i said that's the pull into the trees on the right you could expect to see uh throwing an md3 on a 400 plus foot hole though yep. very impressive catches the tree you know it's it's far but it's not that far he still has a putt yeah that's definitely still a putt Here's Thomas taking that forehand line a little bit Thomas. lower. Thomas. No. No, he's in good shape. This is looking great. Yeah, I thought he brought that tree into play, but he throws it perfectly. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot from uh, from Thomas there. See Adam taking that backhand line. Ooh. This needs to come back as well. Again, deceptively far. He might uh, have needed to push a, a flippier disc to get all the glide there, just turning it a bit early into the ground. Yeah. Casey competing with this tree. Which is what I said would constitute a layup. And yeah, sounds, sounds, looks. <laughs> sounds and looks. <laughs> sounds, looks, feels like yeah, I was right. See a little putt attempt here from Adam, though. Doing a little shuffle and dance. What a crazy pitch putt he has. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so high, it's out of frame. Yeah. Here's Max. With the jump on. Oh, not quite. Just a little left. Gets the chains, but can't get it to drop. Thomas making good on his. Ties it up with Casey now and brings it within one of Max. Yeah. There's Casey tapping in his par. You'll see Max and Adam Alexander do the same. No problem, and uh, you know, you know it's it's pretty tight there. Uh, Thomas getting a birdie back on Max, and obviously on Casey. So one stroke back, the entertainment doesn't stop as they walk to the next hole and pass the Canadian geese. Yeah, every hole is a one less opportunity to catch up. It is getting down to the wire. Yeah. Hole 12, it's par three, 311 feet. Challenge here is to either get it past up and above this uh, this tree or to skip it underneath so you can get it up the hill and, and have a look at the birdie there. Because if you're on the other side of that tree, it's not, not the best look. No, I suspect you'll see a lot of driver skips that catch underneath of that tree and push up towards the basket. I did not see a lot of the wide high hyzer in practice. Here's a low shot. That'll be the skip I was that talking about. Beautiful from Thomas there. Gets the just the you know gets the ground play right at the right spot. Yeah I thought that was high out of his hand but it's a well thrown shot. This is high out of this his hand. Yes quite early but he he gets, gets through, through to the other I'm side. Curious if he has a look from there. It'd be really challenging though, because that is pretty quite a bit of trees in there. Again, Max just inches high on his. Yeah, just uh, maybe good trees though, because it looked like he was coming in a little hot. The hill is pretty steep. It does give you some breaks, but yeah, absolutely, you can get oh big play, and this one's just inside. Yeah, maybe contending with the backside of the main tree now. Yeah, should be a challenging attempt for Adam. Yeah, and here's Adams. Look, he's having a hard time finding a line, but it looks like he's found something to go for here. He's got that swoopy putt that you saw earlier, so see if he can pull that out again. Gets it out. Everything he can do just to get it out. Yeah. There ain't nothing. Yeah, you heard it there. There, there was nothing. Here's Casey. Yeah, not better for Casey. <laughs> no. Taking an awkward knee here. Yeah, just taking whichever layup you can get. Yeah, exactly. Here's Max. Max lining up a chance. If he's to pull away from Casey here. Yep. And he makes that one look good. Nice confident stroke from Max. Putting a little bit uphill. That's what you love to see. Obviously, Tom is dropping in his birdie. Keep pace with Max. Yeah, they don't call him tapping Tommy for nothing. 
Is that what they call them? No, I just made that up. <laughs> All right. That's what we're calling them now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably see them on uh, a few more, a uh, little bit more coverage as well. So, of course, this is the first stop of the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. Uh, by the time this releases, we'll have the second stop will be done and Yeah, we'll have coverage of all those nine stops coming out as soon as we can get it out to you guys. So, yeah, has Thomas signed up for any other stops as of now? I, I think he's definitely signed up for nationals and, and maybe a couple other ones. That might be it. And yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll he see. usually plays Foxwood, but as time of recording, that is complete, and I don't think he was there. He was. Oh, Thomas was at Foxwood for sure. He was, never mind, now that I'm thinking, Thomas was definitely there. So catch Thomas on Foxwood coverage, uh, spoiler alert, he's on <laughs> round one coverage. So, And uh, there's our scoreboard after 12, Max, Thomas, Casey at the top still, Jade, Justin, Adam, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then tie for seventh is Nolan, Jeremy, Luke, and Olivier Cote rounding out the top 10. And if that's the Olivier, I think it is. I've played with him before. He's another kind of control touch guy, and he would do very well at this course. Yeah. Hole 13, it's a par 3, 389 feet. Plays downhill, obviously, from that elevated tee pad. And uh, OB to the left here, OB to the right. But uh, this one should be straightforward for these guys. Yeah, the, the big challenge here is just getting that speed control right. The ground is quite skippy, and a lot of guys will be throwing a, a sidearm that kind of pushes the trees on the left that can kind of skip wildly to the right if they don't have the pace correct. And yeah, hitting those trees on the left may be the only way to truly bring that out of bounds into play. Yeah, and I mean, for these guys, this, this is a must-get. Like, if you don't get this one, then yeah, at the top here, like, yeah, you need this one. Funny enough, I was about to say it's harder to get than you'd think. <laughs> um, but maybe not for Thomas. Is he oh, oh, so close. Oh, that basket is shaking in its boots as Thomas <laughs> comes in for some chains. Narrowly yeah. missing deep. Yeah. There's Thomas looking to build off those three birdies in a row. And let's see if Max can, you know, capitalize on that skip ace challenge there that uh, Thomas laid. Absolutely. This looks like a PD2 out of Max. Going to lean on some of that stability. Gets it out wide. This is looking very good as well. And <laughs> he's definitely shorter, but he's, <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> You'd love to see that. Not to be outdone by Thomas. Let's see if Casey can do the same. Put it close. He's got to in order to stay competitive with these two other guys here. And this one might get that skip I was talking about. No. Nope. Oh. Three. Really it is well. it is a little bit wet now at this point, so that grass is not as skippy as as uh it could be. So we definitely saw some 50, 60 plus foot skips uh during my time on the course. Unfortunately, much earlier than these guys. <laughs> and Adam puts his relatively close as well we'll have uh four looks here for for birdie so yeah no a, a great grouping of shots had him here from what looks like about 40 maybe with that high jump putt that he's got it's crazy a chance but it looks like it's under the basket because that's how it comes but three feet prior it was above the band <laughs> yeah and there's thomas making good on his birdie yeah, this is just super tight, good disc golf. Love to see it. There's Casey making good on his as well, and Max should have no problem dropping in his birdie as well. Just keeping things really tight at the top. Yeah, well, these guys clean up. If you're in the comments, tell me how many giant pitch putts you see, because that's a style that has really, really died over the years. Yeah. Not gonna pitch, putt, jump, put that one over the band, put that one in. That one's a <laughs> drop in. So, yeah, getting his part a drop. That is the advantage of that style, right? Your, your yeah. misses are mitigated by how quickly the disc comes down. Let's take another look at this Thomas Gilbert drive, flashing the basket with the, you know, I, running this little bit of a skip ace here, but 
I think this is a sextant firebird out of Thomas. Yeah, it's Ooh. that close, just on this uh, far side of the basket here. And, oh, wow. tight. Couldn't do it better. Hole 14, par three, 325 feet. A lot of these guys will just come out to the left, not quite where the drone is flying. He's flying right into the uh, trees here. But uh, yeah, the, towards this uh, left side here and you just kind of get the air and then have it sort of skip underneath the uh, the willows here. Because you know, if you put too much height on it, you those willows do come into play. Yeah, wide sidearm is what you're gonna see 90% of the time. Uh, Adam seems to be more of a backhand dominant guy and this is a little bit longer than, uh, you know, your day-to-day -day approach sidearm. So we'll see what he does here. I suspect everybody else will kind of push this left side, new trees. This is a bit inside for Thomas. Yeah, but, oh, get some good round play. It stops it from skipping too far. No, that looks great. Yeah, that's a great result. See, Max, Max here, known for his sidearm. Can you follow it up? That also looks a little inside, but a bit higher. And yeah, yeah. no <laughs> there way. <you> go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There you go, Max. Max ace. saw Thomas almost ace the last one, and he had to one up him and put that one in. <laughs> yeah. Getting I think. I think one on the board. That's nuts. That's great. Max loves it. Let's take another look at this. Wow. Couldn't come at a better time. Extends his lead coming into the final few holes just yeah, to take yeah. some of the pressure off. And oh, what a skip. Kind of hit the back side of it, too. Yeah. That is great. You love to see that. Here's a slow mo. We're going to watch this 10 times, or at least I hope so. How often do you see the lead card final round aces? Oh, it just catches the back of the chains. Yeah, that could have been a big putt if it didn't stick, but. Oh, yeah, but it did, it did stick. No need for what ifs after <laughs> such a great shot. Yeah, and how does Casey follow this up? Yeah, again, just a little inside. Yeah. Giving himself a putt from the right though. Nothing yeah. too difficult. And yeah, like I said, Adam going to the backhand. Just getting something flippy and, and hoping it can make its way in. It's got good distance control on that one. Um, you know, you don't get a lot of better results on backhands. <laughs> There's uh, Max with the decent comment there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to walk that one in. And look at all the gallery that got to see that lead card ace. That is an awesome moment for him. Yeah. Just walk into the next tee box. Love it. Here's Adam. See if he can sink his birdie putt. And that's that danger of getting that, that swoopy, you know, getting it a little bit too high there. Yeah, you can see he kind of jams it with that extra step in a little too much. Ooh. Casey getting some basket love there. Yeah. Getting his birdie to drop. Squeaking it over the band. And while we're talking about aces, shout out to Joe Henderson who managed to ace the island hole, hole three, in her round. Yep, you can see that on her Instagram, or you can also check it out on uh, the uh, FPO coverage as well. We did a little... The ace, yeah, I mean... Well, it's here for Max. Felt exactly what I wanted, and I mean, that hole you can't really like go for the ace. It was just like, got a, a nice hop and perfectly in the basket, so yeah. Then you heard from Max. Let's see if he can follow it up on hole 50. Now I was just gonna say, Joe's is, we did a little piece on that in the FPO round. Uh, so go check that out on YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, hole 15, it's par three, 195 feet. They moved the basket on this one a little bit wider to the left and that brings that OB to the left in play as well, so. Yeah, this almost plays as an island. You've got a narrow fairway right off the front and then out of bounds all around the left side. I know for myself, I was cheesing this hole, throwing a sidearm over top of our beautiful camera operator's head here. However, Max going for the tighter straight line. Something needs to go high through the gap, high enough to get left and back in play. And this looks early. Yeah, he hits that tree. Oh, oh no. no. Early and out. Out of bounds. This is almost a worst case scenario for Max. Yeah, unfortunately, following up the ace with the out-of-bounds stroke. Yeah, 
Tom is Tom, taking my line. Yeah, taking that forehand. Ooh, <laughs> these guys are he's scaring like, these baskets in this he, final line. Yeah, he, uh, he was giving that one a real good go. Casey Hannemeyer. Up the gut. This looks a lot better. Yes. Good correction over Max's shot here. A little, a little bit long. A little straight. Yeah. Yeah. But still, well inside of Casey's confidence range. And this is pulled by Adam. Pulled, but he gets that branch. It just kind of drops there. He'll be all right. It leaves him inbounds. Let's see. Max here, awkward place to have to play from. Yes, very unfortunate with that tree there. Definitely no chance to save his par. Just wisely laying that up, taking his medicine, as they say. Yeah, you just not enough ceiling to get a proper run on it, and challenging that ceiling, hitting a branch and dropping down would spell absolute disaster for Max. Yeah. Good run from Adam. Mm-hmm. You can see the weather might be making a bit of an appearance as Casey's holding his putter under his jacket to keep it dry for this putt. Gonna say he needed that one to drop to keep pace with these guys yeah there's not a lot of golf left here he needed that one to keep thomas within one as he's almost guaranteed to make this putt and see him shaking his head in the background not happy with that effort no thomas getting his birdie to drop bring himself momentarily within one of max obviously max still having to put out his bogey and unfortunately for him that means we're all tied up fortunately for us we've got some tight tight disc golf yet to play all tied up with three to play here and coming into three holes that can produce scoring separation yes that is for sure yeah <laughs> i'm loving join his time on coverage here i think yeah i'd love to see that positive attitude when he's kind of falling off the pace still having fun out there yeah there's another look at Thomas's forehand drive there. Doesn't get much better than that. And stoic, uh, well, <laughs> not <laughs> hard quite. to say whether you like that one or not. <laughs> I think he was scared as it was coming in, but a great result. Yeah, exactly. You must not have seen how close he was to getting the skip there. And there we go. Hole 15 scoreboard check-in and, uh, yeah, like we mentioned, super tight at the top between Max and Thomas. Casey, couple strokes behind. It's not over for him, but definitely he's going to have to pull up his socks a little bit. Then we got a three-way tie for fourth, Justin, Noah, and Jade, and then Adam, Brian, Luke, and Jeremy rounding out our top ten. Yeah, like we said, Justin Zimmer in the clubhouse, eight down with the hot round so far, um, securing a chance at that fourth place spot. Yeah. Hole 16, it's a par four, 556 feet. Challenging uh, fairway here as he, you know, the path on the right-hand side is out of bounds and you can see the white line on the left-hand side is out of bounds as well. Now the, the out of bounds on the left, it kind of does dip towards that tee pad on the left and then it stops. So you'll see a lot of these guys on their second shot, you know, they have that open area on the left. However, it does drop down there. Yeah, I suspect you might see eagle attempt here from Thomas. It's very, very doable. And because that OB does stop, you have a spot to bail out safely if you go for it and Heiser out a bit too much. Yeah, and you can kind of see right there where uh, Thomas is wiping off there. It's The rain is following and there's a little bit of a pit right where they, they their, their pivot foot is. So trying to dry it off as much as he can. Yeah, and keeping that footwork in mind and keeping your nerves settled as you come into these final holes will be a challenge yeah look at thomas's scorecard in the last six holes this needs to fade this gotta come back in he needs some help oh <laughs> wow running away from the disc he got some love there from the path yeah that does not come in if he doesn't catch some card path good for thomas that's going to be deep of the pin as well that is a nearly 600 foot drive Casey Hannemeyer, here we go. With a pretty clean back nine so far, but and unfortunately, this one is not going to come back. <laughs> Without the love of the path, that one will stay out of bounds. And and somewhat early, too. He doesn't get that distance on it, either. 
Yeah, he wanted that to have some hyzer and flip a little later and stay in. Let's see what Adam's got. We haven't seen a big drive from him yet. Oh, no. Oh, maybe. Yeah, flipped over a little bit towards the end there. And, and wow. Yeah, keeping that one in the fairway. Yep, staying in, getting some late flip on that one. And so now Max. Following up that bogey, he needs to have this one coming clean. It looks like he's going to get, uh, yeah, that one's in bounds. Yeah. You can see, I, I know that's a glow PD2 out of Max. Definitely seeing what happens to Casey and knowing that's not a mistake he wants to see repeated by himself. Mm -hmm. Adam going with the wide hyzer here. Yeah. He's partly playing then he's just going to drop beside the pin. Perfectly thrown. Tap in birdie for him. Casey playing that overstable putter. Yeah, I believe that's a distortion, kind of his go-to approach disc now. Maybe leaving it shorter than he wanted, but again, shouldn't be a challenge. Max with the jump putt approach. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching that catch edge for the roll, but yeah. checks up nicely. Thomas now. From behind the basket, it looks like. Yeah, he pushed it deep. This is a tough putt, but he's definitely going to go for it. Yeah, and he does give that one a run. That's some danger, though, because he, he has that hill to contend with, but it looks like if Casey's out, then it looks like he's not too far. Yeah, it's a good indicator that he didn't get that potential for a bad roll. Casey yeah. will put in his par, no problem. Here's Thomas. Oh, yeah, it has birdie to drop. And Max... See uh, Adam put in his birdie, then Max tapping in his birdie to tie it up with Thomas heading into hole 17. And hole 17 is a challenging one. There are not a lot of clean lines, and it produces some long putts. Oh, we're going to see Thomas's run. See how exactly it'll... Yeah, just... That's how close it was. Oh, boy. Getting some good ground play on the other side there. There you have it. Thomas, Max, tied up. Hole 17. This is, I can't get much tighter than this. Speaking of tight, hole 17, you, you mentioned it earlier. It's 248 feet. Tight lines is not a lot of really easy ways to get to the basket here. As you see, it's kind of uphill. And uh, this direct line is sort of uh, congested with the branches uh, from the willows and this tree on the left. Yeah, you'll see some people try and get a backhand shape that kind of flexes around the dangling willow. Most of these players, however, will try a sidearm on the left side. There's kind of a hole in the tree. I don't know how else to say it. It looks like there's a ton of branches, but you can slot it in the leftmost tree or underneath the branches. As you can see, there's about a four foot slot low. Thomas going for that slot I just mentioned. And then I think you'll probably see Casey go a little higher and Max might go all the way up and around that tree sidearm. Maybe Adam will try that line with the back end. Nope, he's doing the flex up the middle. And that looks great. And wow. Deep. Deep, but a well thrown shot as and those that, branches kill and a lot. That was lot a beautiful of line ends. there. Yeah. Yeah, Max going high. And this is one of those ones that can produce a longer putt than you want. See where this one drops. And there you go. Tombstone. That's far, though. Yeah, that's got to be about a 45-footer. There you go. Now you know what disc he threw. <laughs> Cloud breaker. <laughs> yeah. Casey uh, going for more of an approach disc, so he's probably going to take that lower one. And that's the... Uh, oh, no. Oh. That was hunting for the hole in the tree I was talking about. Just above that branch produces maybe the best putts, but a tougher line to hit. And I hate to say it, I think that takes him out of it. And you can see Casey's kind of thinks so too, as he just walks up and just put, just throws that one right away. Yeah, he's only about 120 feet out, and I know that's kind of just the flick of the wrist for him. But Let's see if Thomas can make good on this one. Yes. That's a good That's a putt. great putt. That's an aggressive putt. Puts him up by one with 
max to make an, yeah. a similar distance putt, maybe even further, playing uh, Thomas's first just out of convenience. Yes, and that puts a lot of pressure on Max here. Oh, oh not quite. So close oh. to matching the effort of Thomas there. Just needed a couple inches lower. Yeah, that is really too bad. Oh, that's a tough one. You always want to be online, and you always want to give it the height to be competitive, and he did both of those things just a little too high. Let's see if Adam can get his to drop here. Yeah, he does. Great, see Max's head down, the body language not looking great here as he goes to tap out to yep. approach his final hole. And Casey first, tapping in his par. Like we mentioned, it's pretty much over for for Casey here and gives the crowd a wave there. Yeah, Casey very safe uh, over fourth place, so he can do anything with the strokes that he does have, yeah. but very, very difficult to make up that many strokes in the final hole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to this, hole 18. Because of this amazing putt from Thomas from distance, puts the pressure on Max. Max can't quite get his to drop, and there's the reaction from Thomas. He loves it, thanking the crowd. Yeah. That's a great putt. You can see him trying to keep the smile off his face, but it, it's, <laughs> it's not there. doing the best job. And here it is. This is this is what it comes down to. Hole 18, tight gap at the start. Par 3, 439 feet. OB to the right, path and beyond to the parking lot. And then there's OB on the left. You can kind of see the stakes beyond the sky walking down the, the fairway here. You know, the, the easy play is to just lay it up to the just the drop zone there and then just kind of put it under the trees for your for your par. But, you know, the way this is playing out, this is, you know, Max has got to go for this. And, you know, Thomas has the luxury of, of playing the easy route. Yeah, this is an extremely difficult as a par three. We all played under the impression that this was a par four at the beginning as well. Thomas is going to take the layup sidearm on the outside, which was very, very common. However, uh, this green is reachable if you play the main gap. You bring in all of the out of bounds, but this will be the only way for Max to be able to catch Thomas. And I suspect him and Casey will both probably run it for an attempt to shuffle up that top three. Yeah, and I mean, it's definitely reachable. All I have to do is go and look at last year's coverage of the TCO when, when Thomas himself did it and, and made the shot, showing off for the crowd. And Hopefully, uh, Max can get go on. Oh, this Adam, needs to get in. Not quite getting the, the the shape on that disc that he wanted, and you can tell he's still <laughs> smiling though. That's the, you know, you love to see that on lead card. All right, this is. This is it, Max? Max needs this. He yeah. Needs it to go. All the pressure on this shot. I know he can reach it, but we were under the impression this was our first hole to play. So not a lot of us practice going for it. Here you go. And this needs to hold that turn. It doesn't quite look like, oh, and he got that kick off the tree. And unfortunately that one kicks out of bounds. I think that's it. I think that must, that's gotta be it. That may give Casey the green light now that he can catch Max almost guaranteedly if he can pull off this drive. And he's just left it low with too much turn. Just burns. Get that turn. Is he going out of bounds as well? I don't see anyone. It looks like yeah. he is. There's the red flag. And now, maybe stopping the battle between Casey and Max, we can still see drama on these elevated baskets. If there's ever a hole that was built to create scoring separation, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, in this scenario, I mean, as Adam puts this one <laughs> really close, you know, recovering from that out-of-bounds stroke, I think... Uh, All the pressure on Thomas here. Yeah. As you see the white sign on the fence on the right, this is actually a Mando, so you can't swing the hyzer out wide and safe. Forces Thomas to get underneath him. Now he's left his short. And, you know, it, it leaves a small window for Max. A very small one. He basically has to throw it in. As you see, uh, Casey going over the out-of-bounds stroke, sees the line, gets that one to fall within the circle. 
Yeah, if Max manages to lay this up perfectly and make his putt and Thomas misses his, we will see a push to a playoff. Oh no, he needs the stroke. I think he's I think he's gotta throw this one in. He has to throw this in or Thomas needs to miss twice. Yeah. I don't I mean that's really the only line he had. Yeah. That's and that's, that's it. tough. And uh, you know what? Not a gimme putt on the elevated basket either now. Yeah, and I mean yeah, for sure. But you know what? I think Max has made a lot of fans today. There's a really tight battle coming down the line. Unfortunately, Thomas just outplaying him on the last couple of holes. Yeah, if we go back to where Max made that ace, I really think that this is Max's tournament if he doesn't go OB on the next hole. Yeah. The short island. Two stroke swing. I mean uh, I mean that's kind of the story of this whole round. Two stroke swings here, two stroke swings there. You know, just good on Tom Thomas here for uh just sticking to it and making sure you can come away with the win. Still going to attempt this putt. And he makes it anyways. One for the crowd. That secures the win here for Thomas. Not enough separation for Max to be able to let Casey back into this one. What a weekend of good disc golf we got to see from this group. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And like I said earlier, I think Max has made a lot of fans. There's not a lot of people that knew who he was. Obviously coming over from, uh, you know, he, he was raised here in Canada, but coming over from Sweden where he most recently was. So as we see uh, Thomas once again lifting the trophies, the TCO champion two times in a row now. Yeah, book ended by our two tournament directors, Chad and Carrie, put on a great show all weekend. What an intense day. Uh, thank you so much to Chad and Carrie and all the tournament staff for hosting such another turn a great tournament again this year. And I'm very, very thankful to be able to come back up here to Canada uh, each and every year and come play these tournaments. The, the support from you all means so much to me, and I'm really looking forward to another one next year. Thank yes, you so much. There you have it. Words from the uh, TCO champ himself. As he said, it's one of the tightest battles that he's been in, and he's going to remember it for a while. I think all of us will. It was really great. I might go so far as to say that's the best battle we've seen in Canadian disc golf, modern Canadian disc golf history. I, I think I'd have to agree with that, especially on coverage. Thank you so much for watching. Here's our final scoreboard. Thomas obviously on top. Max in second place. Casey in third. Justin and Jade and Adam all tied for fourth at Nake 14. Noah and Brian tied Nake 12. Olivier and Jeremy at Nake 10. Unfortunately, Jeremy getting away with a plus one there. That's not what you want to see in a final round, but still squeaking in the top 10 performance. So yeah, absolutely. Can't take away those strokes you had in the first two rounds. Thank you so much for watching all three rounds of TCO. And uh, we're very excited to, to bring you guys the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. Stay tuned for the second stop in Foxwood. And I'm, uh, I'm Andre. And I'm Jesse. Thanks for uh, watching. Good night, guys. <laughs>